Now that we have an understanding of what beamforming is, and well, at least conceptually how it's achieved with gain and phase shifts, in this video I want to walk through how it can be used to overcome some of the problems that we face with modern communication systems like 5G and Wi-Fi. Again, we're going to focus on concepts in this video rather than the equations themselves, but I think it'll still be pretty interesting, so I hope you stick around for it. I'm Brian, and welcome to a MATLAB Tech Talk. With wireless communication systems, we're trying to transmit information from one point and then receive it at another. And electromagnetic waves are a great way to do that because, well, for one, they travel at the speed of light, and two, we can take advantage of antenna arrays and beamforming to shape the beam in a way that benefits the communication link. Now, wireless communication comes with some challenges due to the nature of how and where it's used. For one, communication systems usually have to serve many users simultaneously. And two, they have to deal with multiple paths between two radios when operating in a scattering-rich environment. So let's expand on that first issue. It's common with communication systems to have a single array that needs to communicate with as many users as possible. Perhaps the most ubiquitous example is with 5G wireless, where there's a main transmitter and receiver that communicates with many different 5G radios. You know, so that multiple people can be on their phone, browsing the internet at the same time and in the same general location. But this same capacity problem can be found in Wi-Fi, where a single router is communicating with several Wi-Fi equipped devices in a house. And it can be found in ground-based satellite communication, where a single ground station is communicating with several satellites as they pass overhead. So this is the first thing we need to consider, how to increase capacity from a single array. Now, one way that we can get an array to communicate with several different radios at the same time is to just duty cycle between all of them. For example, we can point the beam at one receiver for some amount of time and then jump to another and then back again. In this way, we're increasing the number of users, but at the expense of cutting the throughput from each user, since it's not a continuous link for them we'll see that we can actually increase capacity without affecting the throughput using multi-channel beamformers. But we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. All right, so let's get to the second issue of having multiple paths between a transmitter and a receiver. And that's coming from environments where there's a lot of objects and materials that can scatter and reflect the beams. Now, this probably isn't much of an issue for satellite communication since there's usually not a whole lot of scattering between the ground and space. However, it is prevalent for Wi-Fi and 5G, since they tend to operate in urban environments where there's a lot of potential scatterers in the form of metal sheeting in the walls, large buildings, and moving vehicles. So the question that I want to answer is, how can we take advantage of arrays and beamforming to address these two issues, to be able to maintain a robust link to multiple users at the same time? Well, to answer that, let's take a step back. From the previous videos, we know how to affect the shape of a beam by adjusting phase and gain to each element in the array. And we know of two ways to adjust phase and gain. We can use an analog phased array antenna, or we can use digital beamforming with a multi-input, multi-output array, or a MIMO array. In block diagram form, the phased array looks like this. The RF signal is constructed that we want to send, and then that exact RF signal is sent to each antenna element in the array. Well, it's not exactly the same since there are phase shifters for each element that are used to steer the beam, and there are amplifiers for each element that will allow for gain tapering to control the side lobes. But the underlying RF signal shape is the same since it's coming from the same RF chain. That signal is just being amplified and shifted. Now for MIMO systems, each antenna is connected to its own RF chain. And this means that we can construct completely different signals for each element, which gives us a lot of control over the shape of the beam. And like we talked about, this flexibility opens up the ability to do adaptive beamforming. But since these digital arrays can essentially construct entirely different signals for each antenna element, we can do more than just shift phase and gain we can combine several signals together, each weighted with their own gain and phase to create a multi-channel beamformer. 
This type of beam forming has the ability to construct and send entirely different signals in different spatial directions using a single antenna array, which is important to both increase capacity and take advantage of multipath environments. So let's talk about how multi-channel beamforming is accomplished. And to start, let's revisit the single channel beamformer. We have a signal that we want to send and it's adjusted using the weighting vector. And then the signal has different gains and phases for each array element which produces an interference pattern that forms the beam shape that we want. This is what it would look like for an eight element array with isotropic antennas. Now, if we have a second eight element array with a different weight vector for the signal, then the beam for this array could be steered in a completely different direction. So if we have two arrays, we could easily send a signal in two directions. But here's what's really cool. We can accomplish this on a single array if we take the signals that go to the eight elements in the first array and add them to the eight signals for the second array, then the interference pattern that results from this summation is the superposition of the two beam patterns. And now if we change the weights to the different channels, we have the ability to steer each channel separately from the other. I mean, check it out. It's like two searchlights just scanning the sky, but it's doing it from a single array. Now this is pretty cool, but it does come at a cost. Multi-channel beamforming requires a different RF chain for each array element. And this is because after summing the two channels, each element has to transmit a unique signal from the others. And this requires its own RF chain to construct. Hence, a MIMO array is necessary for it. But what I find really interesting is that both channels are being radiated out in all directions at the same time on the same array. It's just that the interference pattern creates these two distinct beams. The first channel being radiated out on all of the elements is constructively added in one direction, whereas the second channel is being constructively added in a different direction. So in this way, we can send the power for each channel in separate spatial directions. All right, so what does this mean for capacity in multipath environments? Well, let's start with the multipath scenario. In scattering rich environments, there might be more than one path that the signal can take and still reach the receiver. And this might not seem like a big deal since we could just figure out which path is the strongest and just point the main beam in that direction, right? I mean, this would give us the best signal to noise ratio if we could put all of the power in the direction of the path with the least amount of loss but that might not actually be the best solution. Well, at least in terms of providing a robust communication link. For example, in cities, the environment is dynamic. The receivers themselves might be moving, the reflectors might be moving, and there might be new obstacles that arise within the path. In this case, the communication link could drop out suddenly when the main path is blocked and then come back again once it has cleared. So if there is a scatter rich environment, a better approach might be to use different channels to send the same information out along different paths. For example, if we have an array that can send the same signal in two directions, then if both paths are available, the summation of the received power could be comparable to a single channel approach. Well, maybe a little bit less since one of the paths might have more loss, but if one path gets blocked temporarily, then at least some of the power is still reaching the receiver through the other path and the signal is not lost completely. This is the idea behind spatial diversity. We're taking advantage of multi-channel beamforming to improve the quality and reliability of a wireless link in a multi-path environment. Now for applications like 5G, not only do we want robust communication, but we also want to communicate with multiple users. So we need increased capacity as well. Therefore, instead of sending the same information across multiple channels, we can also send different information on each channel. In this way, if the users are separated spatially, one antenna array can communicate with multiple 5G radios at the same time by sending out different information in different directions. Of course, with 5G, it's usually in crowded areas like cities. And so not only do we want an array with large capacity, but we also want very sharp beams to target individual radios. 
Both of these criteria require massive MIMO arrays. In fact, 5G arrays can have dozens or even hundreds of elements. And theoretically, an array that's this large could have hundreds of channels, each pointing in different directions and each serving a different user. However, these massive MIMO arrays introduce a new problem that we have to address. If we go back to our block diagram of the MIMO array, we can see that in order to have multiple channels, we need to have multiple different RF chains. And this isn't a problem when the array is small. But with massive MIMO arrays, we can run into a cost issue. 5G operates at millimeter wavelength, and this means that if the elements are spaced half a wavelength apart from each other, we need to have all of those RF components packed into a very small area. And this can come with some serious hardware costs, which can be impractical for a lot of commercial applications. So with that in mind, we can compromise between the traditional analog phased array, where there's just one RF chain, and the massive MIMO array, where there are multiple RF chains, and each chain can be unique from every other one. The compromise is a hybrid approach. In a hybrid approach, we can still have a huge number of antenna elements, which is important for creating sharp beams. However, we don't need one RF chain per element, and instead we can just have a few RF chains, one for each channel, which then all have their own phase shifters and amplifiers to further steer the beams and control the lobes. This approach reduces the number of channels for the array since we can only have a channel for a given RF chain, but we get reduced complexity and cost for the same sharp beam that we get with multiple elements. So it can be a good trade-off. Now, in this video, we covered the general idea behind multi-channel beamforming, but I think it's helpful for you to explore it a little bit more with some hands-on examples. Specifically, I've linked to a MATLAB example called Improve Signal-to-Noise Ratio and Capacity of Wireless Communication Using Antenna Arrays. In this example, it walks through a single-channel communication system to provide a baseline, and then it builds up the system with multi-input, multi-output, and multiple paths environments, and shows the improvement in SNR and capacity. It'll also help you further understand the topics that we covered in this video, so I hope you check it out. I've also linked to an example that walks through a massive MIMO hybrid beamformer. This one is particularly interesting because it also shows you how to determine the environment or the multiple paths that exist between the transmitter and the receiver in order to create the pre-coding that is needed to take advantage of those paths. So be sure to check this out as well. All right, so this is where I'm gonna leave this video. And if you don't wanna miss any future Tech Talk videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you wanna check out my channel, Control System Lectures, you can find more control theory topics there as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.